Денеска сме на средба со писателот Франсис Кирпс. Тој е луксембуршки автор, сатиричар и новинар. Некои најосновни биографски податоци за него од 90-те години објавува поезија и проза во различни антологии и списанија во Германија и во Луксембург. Наградуван низ годините и во раните 2000-ти стапува на поетската слем сцена. How did you get this idea of deconstructing some of the world's classics? Okay, starting from Red Riding Hood, okay, Virginia Woolf, Cthulhu, Lovecraft, and uh, also uh, Prosper Merime, which is yeah. one of the most fantastic short stories that ever Ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's Evolve. why I did it. Well, to start at the beginning, uh, the idea was not a book, but one story. And that was, uh, I was asked by a, a literary magazine in Luxembourg if I had an idea uh, for a short story. And I had an idea, and that was, why not take uh, one of my favorite short stories, Die Verwandlung Metamorphosis by Kafka, around and... Uh, Imagine not uh, <clears throat> a human uh, wakes up as a big insect, but an insect wakes up as a big human, a mammal, and how does that insect react? Is it proud to have climbed up the evolution ladder, or is it disgusted, like the guy in Kafka? And so there was not much uh, theory, but I just thought, uh, let's check out what comes out of the idea. So I said, okay. A fly, a fly uh, wakes up as a human, and I took the same beginning as Kafka, one morning, no, no, no. And from there on, I turned my back to Kafka because I, uh, Kafka is a master, is a one, one of a kind. So I don't measure myself with Kafka, and I don't make fun of him. I just thought, take some of his creativity and go another. So my story has nothing Kafka-esque. It's one of the, one of the most comical stories in the book. And that was the idea. So I had a mutation published in some literary magazine. And the second who existed already before the idea for the book was Re Little Red Riding Hood. And that was a poetry slam organized by the European Union sometime in Berlin. And every there was one slammer from every country, from each country. Yeah. And our common theme subject was Little Red Riding Hood because it exists in every country. And so we, we got the idea to do something creative with Little Red Riding Hood in Poetry Slam. So not uh, in the Poetry Slam context. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, a European Slam where we... So it has to be verses about Red Riding Hood or it could be a short story, anecdote, whatever, fable? Whatever. Take Red Riding Hood and make a Poetry Slam text out of it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And so we have people from Portugal to Estonia to Switzerland who are not in the EU but always participate. Um, and I, I always... I, I thought I'm not. That's the only piece in 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 the book where I am not a big big fan because I never was a big fan of these fairy tales, these old Grimm style fairy tales. And I thought, what do I do with Ra Little Red Riding Hood? And I thought, yeah, <coughs> let's 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 make Grandmother Red Riding Hood and let's have it play in some <coughs> modern modern contemporary uh, context, you know, and and. These these <clears throat> two pieces existed, and then when I talked about with Hydra about a book, I had the idea: why not do a whole book of mutations, more uh -huh. more planned? So these two were there, and then I made a list with my favorite pieces from my favorite authors, like 20 to 25, and not everyone worked. Like the Tunnel by Dürrenmatt didn't work, or La Gia by Edgar Allan Poe did not. And so I was left with enough that works. And like Miriam's short story, we had one little excerpt <laughs> in our French school book. And I was 15 years old and I read Poe and Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that statue, it, it hit me. And then I bought the Miriam's book. And I remembered it back when I did that book. I, that's one of the best short stories that was ever written, you know. And so I, I thought, let's pay them tribute. In my so it's more like a <coughs> tribute, yeah. Yeah, it's no. not deconstruction. Yeah, like a Kafka, I deconstruct the, the, the his tale to to the start. I just keep the start. A human uh, wakes up as a bug, as an insect, and look what Kafka has done of that. You know, mm -hmm. there's no magic, there's no explanation, and that's the coolest thing about it. 
And so I just took the beginning and I say make, and it's really, it's, mine is not Kafkaesque, it's a, it's a funny comical story, you know, it's not, that's the idea just to show you, we are not the crown of creation, you know, mm -hmm. a fly would rather be a fly and not a human being because it is not made to be, but afterwards it's still, it, it has adapted and it's, it's become that lazy bastard who always watches TV at the end of the story. <laughs> um, you mentioned the Brother Grimm stories. Yeah. Uh, During your education, did you get them with the, those uh, first versions that they had that were more bloody one, or those who are the, more the, didactic? The ones for kids. Yeah, that with the was, happy ending. You I would know, not there even, is always. Yeah, I would the, not even call it. I would not even call the downside. Yeah, I would not even call it education. The, these are common. We don't did not even know they came from Brother Scream. That was gr grannies who told them, and and no, well, we had these. Or how you call it in English? We had vinyl records and cassette tapes, and that was called Hörspiel, where somebody recounted the Brothers Grimm things uh, for kids in German and in Luxembourg. A bright version, something like for kids, one version and no, one no. version for I the. Did, I did not thing? even know about Brothers Grimm uh, and and the work they did. That was it was just like Mickey Mouse and and so ah, just ah, kids ah, stories who were everywhere that. When you had a, a book for very like four, fi four five year olds, there wasn't even mention of Brother Scream. So I did uh -huh, not so you like you have uh, the, the Zwergnaser, he is by Wilhelm Hauf, I did not know that. For us it was all... F it was just stories yeah, without... Uh, yeah. Yeah, who, stories for kids. Who wrote them more... And afterwards I learned that the Brother Scream collected those stories and you have a very brutal sexual yeah, yeah, version yeah, yeah. of uh, Red, Red Riding Hood in French tradition. So that these stories were recounted everywhere around Europe or, or the world, maybe uh, like an archetype, and they were very different in, and depending on uh, who told them and f who they were told to. And so what's, why not make another version? And the only thing is, when I was a kid, I did not really like all these Märchens. We call it Märchen, fairy tales. I prefer Donald Duck. Asterix and all that stuff and my books, <laughs> uh, More like, comics, like right? and, and it blight and, and stuff like that. I did not. I was very fast. Uh, if if it wasn't for that European thing, I would not really have had the idea to do something with any of those old Grimm stories. I would have. I wanted to do E.T.A. Hoffman, who is a great author, but <coughs> I, it doesn't didn't work. He's too great. <laughs> I did mm. not know how to. And that was only, we kept it because, yeah, but because the yeah, publisher said, let's keep it, and uh, it's a successful poetry slam text. I like to read it. And my, uh, how you say, the lector, the editor, the one who corrects, he said it's the weakest, yeah, yeah. It's the weakest story in the book. You know, he didn't, he didn't like it as much as the rest, but we kept it at the end, you know. And, and other stuff, even like Igor Bachmann poem, uh, I grew up with both, with Inge Bachmann poems and with Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe and Stephen King, you know, and for me there's no difference. There's not, you look down on the one, oh, it's poetry, it's not good, or, oh, it's horror fiction, it's not good. It, it's what I, what I grew up with, you know. Do you find out, uh, do you find Stephen King like the real successor of Edgar Allan Poe and no. Lovecraft? No. He does himself not... Um, They are so different, the three of them. Poe, he's a writer. You know, yeah, a writer. that's the point. He's a writer and he writes uh, horror fiction. And uh, Edgar Allan Poe, he, he created a few genres. He created a bit of the horror fiction, but you had Hoffmann in Germany. And uh, in fact, Poe also invented the crime story with his murders in Zurimok. There was not much before him. And then he wrote those poems, like The Raven. So I don't think Stephen King would say that he's a successor in a way of a long line of uh, uh, guys who, who like the dark, you know, writers who like the dark and who communicate it to their readers. Uh, but like King has a little, we talked about him recently, his friend, he has a little moral side, a little political side. And Poe has that too, uh, Lovecraft not. Uh, Lovecraft, I know that King has learned a lot. Everyone has learned from Lovecraft to write in that 
I think because Lovecraft he created a whole universe, a whole uh, the, the whole of the Cthulhu Milus myth. And when I grew up, it was not that well known. I knew it uh, throughout heavy metal. You know, they referred Cthulhu, Metallica, Call of yeah. Cthulhu, uh, Ride the Lightning, the last among song. Other, yeah, among other, yeah, the thing that should not be is Lovecraft. My metal body. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know about the Cthulhu before Metallica. Yeah, <laughs> me too. And so, and then I got German friend and. <clears throat> there were a lot, his, nearly his whole stuff was uh, translated into German, uh, the fantastic Biblos library of uh, Zurkamp. And so I got them all and it, it fascinated me totally. And he was not such a good writer as, uh, as uh, Poe, not even as King, uh, if you just check mm -hmm. the skills. But he had, he had this idea of this malevolent universe And it's something quite terrifying in, in its way, even if the stories in themselves often are, they, yeah, they lack skill. But the way he wrote, and then now it becomes, that's a parody, I would say. Well, it, it's, there are so many parodies now of Lovecraft because he's very easy to parody. And now he also he gets criticized because obviously he was a sexist, he was a little Oh, racist, yeah, he yeah. was also anti-Semitist so, yeah, and so, racist. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and it's not, not, you don't see much, but you see a little bit of that. When you think about it, you read a little bit of that inside his writings, you know. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he was, the guy was a, a nerd. He was, a, he was not really a bad racist, but still, you know, there, <laughs> so there's the unclean side of all. And it's okay when you put it in the universe, but when you attract it, to, he has a certain lower races and stuff. So it's okay to parody him, I think. But Couldn't he, find it in he was a big inspiration yeah, for a lot of people. And for, King has taken inspiration from everywhere, even from guys like Tolstoy. Yeah, so. but King uh, could be, let's say, sometimes he's too redundant in his writing. Mm -hmm, he can be mm -hmm. shortened because... Yeah. Maybe this is a blasphemy, <clears throat> but uh, no. I think that uh, somehow, sometimes the movies based on Stephen King's books okay. are much better than the books itself. I don't know. I, <clears throat> I, Miss King, the thing is, sometimes it's too long, Alfred. You're, you're right. And you will it never. It can be short and you, know, yeah. you can cut out the. Yeah, yeah there, there, you see, it seems sometimes like he has had no editing and it goes on for. for, for Uh, about about some guy who is not even important to the to the whole yeah. story, mm -hmm. and sometimes King, a few of the novels. Other, I, I prefer his short stories. He's a totally good uh, short story writer. I had Night also shift, yeah, and on, on my list were Children of the Corn by Stephen King to work with it, and I did not really find a take, you know, so I left it as it is, you know. Uh, And that's one of my favorite. Yeah, Night Shield and the other one. But that, that's really, he's a really good craftsman when it comes to short stories. And in novels, sometimes, yeah, he, he, he's just plodding along, you know. There are good ones. There's uh, Salem's Lot, which I read yeah, twice. Yeah, Salem's Lot, Jerusalem Lot also. Yeah, 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 some yeah. other ones, they, yeah, I know. Some people do not know that even uh, Stephen King wrote uh, the script for the Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Neither did I. I didn't know what is that. Shoshank re Redemption, when the people, you know, with uh, Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins, when they, ex yeah, when they escape out of the jail? And, ah, that's. Uh, as a From book, the jail, yeah. As a book, it is The Green Mile, no? No, 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 no not, not The Green not Mile. The green that's, mile. One, that's the one on, the Tom Hanks. on Death Row, yeah. Uh, the one is with the with the poster of Bo Derek, and then uh, actually behind the poster there is a escape tunnel. Yeah, I know. I know. That, but that was King. not a novel before. That's only the that's a script. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No way, yeah. I didn't know that. No. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, the, somehow the racism with the Lovecraft and everything. Is there any topic in Luxembourg uh, that can disturb? Because you know the yeah. the basic of the festival, the topic is the please do disturb. You know, when we mention Luxembourg, it's like a calm country. Everything is slow, calm down. Everything no. that you would like to see. But is there any segregation, apartheid of somehow LGBT question or? Yeah, of uh, course. <clears throat> yeah, we're not, prejudice that we can. Uh, yeah, we are not like. There's no wall between Luxembourg and the rest of Europe, and 
Luxembourg lies in between Belgium, France and Germany. And it's so small that, <clears throat> how do I say, we, read, we watch German TV, we watch French TV, we read German papers. So on that I'm way... I'm talking as a Macedonian island. passenger who needs at least yeah. 30 minutes to go in each country, you know. Yeah. In the, you know, as we say, during the good days, we can pass the border in 30 minutes. Otherwise, it's we, we in almost ten, a, ten minutes, one hour. 10 minutes, it's even smaller. So, and so, of course, everything that's uh, a topic in Germany, especially, is a topic in Luxembourg. So, yeah. And, of course, Luxembourg was uh, governed by the Christian Conservative Party for no, nearly all of the history in the 20th century with one exception in the 70s, and that was the Liberal Democrats. And now from like 2011 or 13 on, it's Gambia, and that's the green, the blue, that's the liberals, and the red, that's the socialists. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that, that's a change, but it's not always a change for the better. And I'm not a conservative, but uh, they promise changes. But one thing has changed, and the church, religion, and school are now separated. That was not the case. We had like... Luxembourg is a very Catholic country, always has been, and so it was totally normal that you have three hours of Catholic religion, of religion, which means Catholic religion uh, in school, and you only can get out of it at high school if your parents allow it. And so <clears throat> there was a big grip of the Christian, the Catholic religion on the, on the whole of Luxembourg uh, until until now, until it go, it went a little. Uh, A little less, but I, I still uh, was a kid in the 70s and in, and in the 80s, so I still lived with it. And with people going to church who believe in nothing at all, except for money. And, uh, yeah, and calm, yeah, we have no real big cities. Luxembourg City is the biggest city with 100,000 people or a little more. So you have no real big city problem like ghettos, but you have uh, a big problem uh, begging beggars. Uh, more and more and more uh, unemployment, poor people as compared to the very rich people who also exist but uh, they are drugged. locals from Luxembourg or maybe they came from other countries, you know no, that's Luxembourg mm -hmm. yeah and uh, uh, that's just, that's just an, a system that's a little bit unjust and not everybody has work that's, uh, not, not everybody works in a bank in a bank work foreigners from the UK, from the United States and Scandinavia, because they are foreign banks. They are only there because of the bank system of Luxembourg. And Luxembourgers themselves, they do not really... There are some, but not like we all work in banks. A lot of people work for the state, and the state has a lot of money because of the banks and of Amazon being in Luxembourg, Google coming to Luxembourg, Coca-Cola having been there, mm -hmm. and so all that because of tax companies. reductions which only work with a small country. Because for Germany, even if they did those tax reductions for, for like Amazon, it would not be enough money. But for a country of like 800,000 people, if you do that, you have a lot of money for the state, and then the state can uh, have a lot of people employed for the state, and so teachers earn quite well. Uh, the cultural system is okay. It's, it's well-funded, but how can I say? There's not much grassroots. There's always the view of the, you know, the shiny shiny stuff, the glamorous stuff, they uh, rather take some big ballet or, or theater production from Germany or France than give the money to somebody who tries to build up something in Luxembourg. So it's like everywhere. And there were narrow-minded people back then when I was young. There were cool people, there were socialists. And like I said, the Luxembourg is south, south there were iron ore mines. So that was a minor, minor country, so mining people. So working class, so they, they did vote for the communists. And there were uh, cities until at least the 90s where the communist mayor <coughs> voted by the people. <laughs> and now we have a, a normal left party, a normal... They separated themselves from the communists because they were... Uh, they turned their back to Stalin, while the old communists, they still did not uh, disavow Stalin and uh, that, that sort of communism, you know. Like the Germans had the same thing with the old SED, the, party, the Eastern German party. There, there was a left party that was based on SED, SED. and then uh, the people who said, okay, we are left-wing, but we are not Stalinist, so we disavow all that and the history of that, and we create a new left. And so we have a left party 
In Luxembourg too, which has uh, like gets five six percent, it's the normal left party. And then you have communists who get still get one percent. We have race, we have right wing parties who get also their few per percent. We have a party called ADR, which is a bit like the, the AfD in Germany, always copycat. And they say they are not racist and they are not Nazis, but <laughs> yeah, that's what they say, and that's not what they do. They, they, they are seen with people like the Le Pen bunch, and yeah. also they are quiet. And they are the woman at home cooking and the man going hunting and all that bullshit, you know. <laughs> that, and there's no way back there, yeah, you know. History, yeah. <laughs> and they call that conservative, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned on two occasions about the slam poetry and uh, the contest, the slam contest. I know that uh, just hour and a half before or two hours before you had a yeah. workshop. Unfortunately, because of my other op obligations and some of our listeners maybe will not be able, were not able to be on this workshop. Yeah, but also teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> definitely, <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> our listeners, yeah. Could you explain us a short history about the slam poetry, at, you know, short as that you mm. can? <clears throat> and then I have several additional questions about yeah. slam, because I was a part of a slam poetry contest once. Here, here. Unfortunately, my experience was, was not that good. I'm going gonna, gonna to explain why. Just yeah. I need some short like uh, introduction. What is slam poetry? And why it is not done right in Macedonia? I don't know about Macedonia, but uh, uh, poetry slam basically is a contest, a literary contest, where people go on stage and they perform their own stuff that they have written themselves. And the audience, the public decides who is the winner. Uh, put the, and it, it's, they always say uh, it's not that important to be the winner, but still it is a contest. And if you win one poetry slam, then maybe we get a bit a little better known in the poetry slam scene, and you get invited to others, and it can lead to a professional career as a poetry uh -huh. slammer. And uh, I speak for the German-speaking scene, which is huge. Normally, it has the Switzerland, it has Austria, it has uh, Germany itself, it has neighboring countries like Luxembourg, like South Tyrol, and I did even a slam in. in Netherlands, where they understand enough German, or in Denmark, they understand. So, do you have a? And so there, you have a real system, and it started in the back in the 90s with some people called beat poets, and it, it, of course it was invented in, in the USA in Chicago by Mark Harris Smith in the 80s, and he only wanted to do it to have a selection because he he, he did poetry readings in some jazz club and when he started it, and he also said, I want to have a little bit more of rock and roll and and cool stuff to, to poetry readings. He had so many applications that he had to do this contest thing to have a selection. So if the if the audience voted for some guy, we want to have that guy back, he's good. Then he came back. And from there came this poetry something and So it's more like a Colosseum like yeah? Yeah, yeah, or yeah, 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 it's yeah. And that we can discuss about all that. I I for myself I thought at least I have an audience. And uh, it's normal for, a, for an artist uh, to go in front of an audience and if they don't like you, there's a problem, you know. Are you not good or do they not understand it you? It depends on the quality of the poetry or the way that you are reading it. Because let's say it can be a Edgar Allan Poe poem uh, read by somebody who is ugly. I don't think or maybe somebody who looks like I don't know, like uh, Jason Momoa or uh, who is that? Uh, that's some some actor. I'm not yeah, <laughs> Jason Momoa or I don't know, maybe I, I don't know I Brad don't Pitt, and maybe he's uh, reading some I don't think stupid it, lyrics. No, I don't think that that uh, the the appearance of somebody is important. It's it's how you read it. It's um, it's the voice and the performance and uh, the honesty, because <clears throat> when you in front of an audience, sometimes they get cheated by someone. But normally, uh, you, 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 you're only believable when you do something you, you like. This. When I say like, oh, the, oh, people like that funny stuff, that comedy stuff. Well, then mm -hmm. I will do some comedy and I will win. It's not going to work or for very few people or for somebody who really is a professional writer for like 30 years. So it has to come from yourself, and that's the poetry part in it. So, and it's not always poetry; it can be prose. You know, I, I, I 
small short stories. And it's a way to express yourself. And uh, like me, I, I have won slams and I have participated in German championships, but there's also the side to say, yeah, look, uh, today I don't give a about what they think, you know. Mm -hmm. You have you have people who are a little bit nowadays the German scene is a little too streamlined for for my for my taste. But then there's younger people and maybe I don't understand them anymore. And I did that for like 10, 15 years. It got me uh, an editor, publisher. It got me a little more known in Germany. It was a a step on the ladder where I went where I went without really knowing where to go. And so, and when it's done bad, that normally the problem is not the poets, but the MC. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a guy as MC who doesn't understand who are favorites, boys over girls or girls over boys, or who tries to influence, I have, I have lived stuff like that in Germany too, mostly in very provincial places where the guy, the guy or the guy, the <clears throat> there are some rules you have to apply, like <coughs> no props. No disguisement, no singing, no music, no nothing, just you and your text. And then when you say it's six minutes, then it's six minutes for everyone, and the mic is turned down when somebody tries to be longer. When an MC so fails... just cut him off? Right? <coughs> no, no, it's, it's a little, it's a little Normally it's a little, done a little nicer, and the real slammers, they know it, so... When you pass your six minutes, you have 30 minutes left, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, okay. and... Uh, they're normally the MC guys, and you know them. And when I, I, I have sometimes have had the long stuff, I feel him coming there, looking over my shoulder, and I okay, yeah, I come yeah, to the yeah, end. You know, yeah, yeah. And uh, like in Saarbrücken, that was called Dishta Jungle, Jungle of the Poets, and their mascot was like a big ape, a, go a gorilla, where one guy was disguised as a gorilla. And so when you surpass the limit, and there was a sign, some jungle sound, and mm. at 30 minutes, <laughs> the jungle, boom, exploded. So they have always creative ideas to, to teach people just because to it's, the time it's not and fair. It's space. Not, yeah, yeah. And if you have 10 poets, you know, you can't give every poet like an hour. So if some guy can, yeah, but I have so much to say, yes, yelling. Learn to cut it down or go go somewhere mm -hmm. else. Do your solo, do a solo reading, you know, whatever. So, yeah. The Macedonian version of slam poetry, yeah, it started, you know, my my first starts, yeah, the first starts almost, uh, okay, if not 20, but maybe 18 years ago. But there has always been that feeling that I uh, somehow defined it three years ago when I learned, when I learned the word cringy or cringeworthy by uh -huh. my students. Know, yeah. Because previously I, I wasn't uh, capable of finding the right word. Is it okay if you get that feeling that something is cringy when people read during the... Mm -hmm. Slam poetry. Yeah. I mean, not all of them, but several of them. It happens three years ago when I, when there was during the Struga poetry evening, and there was this cringy feeling. Almost all of the people, some of them were, they were reading yesterday. Yesterday was the, the slam poetry, or it will be tonight because I. Ah, the, the one girl told me. Uh, yeah, it will be it, tonight. It will, be, think, it yeah. will be this weekend, the, the, the Slam yeah. Championship. Yeah, yeah. And, and tomorrow there will be a, a Slam Poetry Evening where I participate here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, I will do Some of the names I remember from three years yeah. ago. And, you know, I get that feeling like, oh my God, like why it is giving me that sort of, not annoyance, but yeah. I think that the right yeah. word is cringe. But am, I, am I becoming too conservative or the people who like conservative reading of a poetry, they like to enjoy the text or maybe listen it if they understand, okay, they cannot return it back when somebody is reading. But sometimes in Macedonia and in the Balkans, when they're reading and uh, during this uh, slam contest, there are sometimes too much emotions, too much history. Uh, too much hysteria, actually, not too much history, <coughs> hysteria, uh, too much acting, too much, let's be honest, yeah, that's, too um, much faking. What can I do but say about that? I'm a guest here and, 
Anyway, I don't know any of the scene and I, I don't understand the language. So the cringeworthy thing, sometimes it's only you, but I had it too and everyone has it there. There were even no... So scene. it's like, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a step it's, that you need to go before... Yeah, it's, it's an open scene, so everybody, everyone can try. And you have the lower level, like you have the big slams in Germany, like Berlin, like Hamburg, like Munich, they are on invitational basis. So people get invited. There might may, may, may be an open list for three or four people, but normally people get invited who have done their, you know, uh, who have alone to be successful and they get paid well. And then you have the smaller, the grassroots levels in the smaller towns and the villages, where maybe normally slams are every month in the big cities with a championship at the end of the year. Hi there. <laughs> and. Uh, Oh, where was I? Um, and when you go, go, like I went to, I would not call Saarbrücken province or Trier, but uh, the Sa Saarland country is like Luxembourg. There's, there's not the same size, quite small. So they only had a, a half a dozen of reliably good slammers. And then you have amateurs, uh, people who don't understand the concept. But I can't talk about Macedonia because I don't know. Uh, so... But but you have that, and then I know people who do not like slam at all. They just say, I don't like it. I don't like what they do upstairs. upstairs. It's maybe because they're too too conservative, or they, no, they, they just, do not like the... No, it's not conservative. Sick religion No, it's, it's, it's people who don't like this emotional side or this poetry side. Uh -huh. They don't, just don't like it. And there's stuff I don't like myself, but as long as you're into this... In because this if you are doing rap, that's okay. Yeah, rap is... If you are doing, like, I don't know, some sort of uh, gospel lookalike, yeah, yeah, then it's okay. I don't know. But if you start screaming, why don't you touch me? I'm your wife. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, then they started like... Then a, it's simply bad. That's it nothing to do with... It makes you slam. feel bad. Uh, that, that's people who come and who overact. You have them everywhere. There was... <clears throat> one one very bad I remember and uh, that, that was a person it was in Austria and <clears throat> that was a person who was only there because the, uh, she was she knew the, the mayor and it was an older woman and she played a migrant mm -hmm. and it was a in fact it was a slam for people who have not German as their fir as their mother tongue so I participated too because my first mother tongue is Luxembourgish and there were a lot of people from migrant uh, backgrounds like Afghanistan like from, from yeah, the different ex Yugoslavia and they were all good and they were uh, funny and they had a, a distance to their own story and then comes this woman who has never been a migrant who see like that you know and that was just bad and so the, the normally the, the the audience decides uh, and so she, she did not came to the next round and she was very angry and that shows the character, you know. So oh, I'm such a good person, I'm doing so blah, blah, blah. like that. And you have that everywhere, you know. Especially on grassroots level, uh, like uh, Macedonia is not a big country, so you can't have a big, big, big scene with some upper crust who has formed like France or, or UK or Germany. It's like similar to like uh, more like Luxembourg or Belgium or in between. So even at a higher level, you may have people who, who, who don't, yeah, who overact, who have not really, because it's not about, uh, <laughs> it's not about... Uh, Is performance everything in slam no, or no, not? No, no, no. Uh -huh. I don't perform at all. I'm a, I'm a, <clears throat> I, I, I read from the, from the, 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 <coughs> the sheet. I'm doing a very dry humor, so that would not work. And then something, girls can perform a little more than boys, and boys, sometimes it goes to looking ridiculous. I'm a big guy, I'm, uh, it would not work if I, you know, play, yeah. play the Let's round. Two, yeah. two of uh, us, yeah. If you have a small guy, you know, a guy of 1 meter 60 or 1 meter 70, who weighs 50 kilos, he, know, he does that in normal life to be... Uh, to be, I don't know, respected. So if a guy like that plays a bit more on scene, it's normal, it's smaller. But if a big boy or a big girl, too, I have seen it, uh, uh, tries to, to do some Zumba on scene, or yeah, it, it's, okay. it's, it's cringe-worthy also. And if you have teenagers doing it, you say, okay. Like in Germany, <coughs> they have the under 20 competition so that people can a little bit learn the, the, the art. And get not thrown into into an audience with 
<coughs> a lot of professional people, you know. <coughs> and that's that. So I can't, that's, if, if there are slammers who are not good, that's for me not a critic against slam itself. Normally it cleans itself up and then you may not be right and other people may like it. That sometimes happens to you, so I, say, I think, oh, is that, isn't that r r totally bad? And then other people say, oh, that was great. So, and that's democracy for you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> In a, in that's a very good. basic way. If it's a way that can, pop, uh, you know, make it more popular to, to read yeah. and to write poetry, then it's okay, you know. Yeah. It's a gateway. It's a that's gateway. That's okay, yeah. If it's a gateway, it as, that's okay. I use it as a gateway because I was a little blocked in Luxembourg. Yeah. Um, I found not enough people at my age, my generations, who thought like, you know, who wrote. And, and so I found those people in Germany. And I write the same language, so we were the same. Then I found people like that in Austria and so on. <clears throat> so it was a gateway. And also some young people, they just do a few slams, they might, may even be good at it, and then they stop again because you have other interests, like you do a sport, even if you're talented, there's no need to become professional. And so it's for me, it's a way to maybe we are popular, but to bring a, a kind of literature to people, to people who don't go to theater, who would not go to some uh, other authors reading and who will not maybe read a lot of books in their life or are not motivated because they are uh, disgusted by literature because of school. Yeah, because, because that, if you want to kill an uh, author, just make him make, a make him assigned reading in the high school, I, and I, he will die I for see, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's how they sell how they sell literature at school. That's uh, but with the slam poetry, you can uh, you can even get yeah. uh, honey from out an ordinary wit. Yeah, and that's uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's too, too, too no close, metaphorically too close <laughs> like the circle. <laughs> that's what I do with the mutations. That's not a, it's not parodies. It's not. It's just to say, uh, these are authors, pieces that influence me, and uh, people might not think about that because they see me as a poetry slam guy, you know, pop, uh -huh. pop culture. And there's not much popular culture in these authors. They are from Mirimi to uh, Kafka. And so I say, get, go check out these authors. They are not uh, dusty. There, there is dusty old literature who you don't, which you don't need to read anymore. But there are, there are some like Kafka, like Mirimi, that's great stories, that's great authors. Just don't be afraid of them. I, am, I was not afraid when I did that book, because it could have gone wrong, you know. Yeah. And I, I always tell people, I'm not, it's not, I'm not measuring myself against, I'm just playing with their yeah. creativity, you know. And uh, I always hope that when people like that book, maybe people who know me as a slammer and then buy, buy the book because I am a poetry slammer, that they say, oh, Kafka, Mirimi, Virginia Woolf, let's check it out. And all these let's pieces see, see. Uh, are available on, even on the internet to check out. <clears throat> and even in Mirimi is available in German, in English, because my editor <clears throat> who corrected me, he, he can't speak French, so he, I, I sent him an English and a German version of the Mirimi Venus Stil, mm -hmm. and they exist because these authors are long dead, uh, there are no rights anymore. That's what I checked, I took only authors where there are no more uh, <coughs> rights. So they cannot whatever. sue you, yeah. right? No, no problem. <laughs> Careful, yeah. No problems there. Okay, so my last question <coughs> will be like a wind-down question. Because you mentioned uh, music and Cthulhu and everything, so Cthulhu. this is uh, Cthulhu. Ah, Cthulhu. Cthulhu, yeah. So this is a treat for me, more like uh, <laughs> you know, because yeah, obviously we came uh, beside the same assigned reading, we have the same assigned music. Any other bands or music that you listen? Not necessarily while you are writing, but in your free time. Because if you know Cthulhu, you know Metallica, right? Yeah, I, I well, was, what is else? Well, I, I'm relatively retro now because I, I don't discover much new music. I was always into punk and into heavy metal. I wrote a punk rock novel. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> And I think I'd, and punk started with The Clash when I was only 11 or 12 years old, and, and I knew Rock the Casbah, and some older guy gave me all their discography, so I discovered it. And metal started with stuff like Iron Maiden, and so, uh -huh. and besides also listening to pop music, but there was a lot of pop music. I, was, <coughs> I liked Gothic, like Sisters of Mercy and stuff, or like Nine Inch Nails for a while. <coughs> 
but then I bought myself a, a, a Smith Records once, and and, and that, that whiny voice and that that guy. I, I didn't like the guy who was singing there. I didn't like him. I wanted to slap him, and I thought I, I want to grow up with Slayer, Metallica, not with, <laughs> not, with, not with Morrissey. Sorry for to all his fans. Yeah. And for metal, you, you know what is funny? The guy that sat here before you, you know. Yeah. Born in Bosnia, now in Croatia, Milenko Ergovic, he was also into punk. Like, uh, what it is, I mean, uh, the guy who is inviting you, he is not into <laughs> punk at all, but yeah. he knows how to invite all the ex mm -hmm. punk oh, lovers, yeah. not punks, but punk yeah. lovers, yeah, yeah somehow. And, and I come from back from the 80s, and my music back then that came really with trash metal. That was uh -huh. this. Uh, These kids who are not much older than us, like Metallica and Slayer and, and all these bands from Germany. Yeah, Megadeth, yeah. Yeah, Megadeth. Okay, Halloween. Uh, yeah, 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 Halloween. Uh, and, and, and they were heavily inspired by, and that was this crossover movement between hardcore punk and heavy metal. So there was no difference. And also, uh, nowadays, yeah, I have not, I There's black metal I like, but when you have all these Nazis in black metal, Ooh, and there what was black metal bands, please. Like both Zimo Borgir, okay? No, that, that's that's classic rock. No, like these Norwegians. Or, and then if you if you <laughs> if you don't know, that's not make make publicity for that. But there was a right wing, and I thought this heavy metal music. It may be conservative, but it was never right wing. You know, it was. Uh, yeah, but you know, bands like Mayhem, they made yeah, the Nazis. Yeah, I made, they, that's what I meant. Those idiots. You know? yeah, yeah, those idiots. They played maybe around, it, but there were people who who took that into the music. You know, and. Uh, That, 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 that's not what, and then they say, yeah, we like old Sodom and the old creator and so And these people were never, never Nazis. They were left-wing or middle or conservative. Nobody has to be left-wing, you know. Uh, but there was always that open-mindedness that, that, that say everyone's welcome, uh, black, white, woman, boy, whatever, you know. No, no I difference. think it's the wrong interpretation of the, of the music. Yeah, maybe, Even in yeah. Bolling at Columbine, They saw that they were listening to Metallica and Misfits, which oh, yes. doesn't mean anything. And mm -hmm. Metallica never caused some problems, you know, or they oh. would never call for a war. Yeah, so so it's I, I read misinterpretation. Uh, yeah. I read uh, the autobiography of uh, Ropal Fall of Jules Priest, <coughs> who were taken to justice for some suicides. And it, our music, their music was always about empowering people. Talking. Uh, which band? Judas Priest. Judas Priest. Ah, Judas Priest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's right. Uh, even if they talk about like Met Metallica have fade to black, that's clearly a song yeah, about yeah, but being depressed. Yeah. But it's not uh, telling people to go kill themselves. No, 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 no. And even if mis yeah. misinterpretation. Yeah. Yeah. Yet Ozzy <coughs> with suicide solution, and that's yeah. about that's about yeah. alcohol. That that's was, totally yes, about, about alcohol, and that's a song against alcohol. Wine is fine, but, but whiskey, whiskey is quick. Yeah. Yeah. Suicide can slow his liquor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's clearly a song about Ozzy's alcoholism, you know, and he's still alive. <laughs> we are sorry, but yeah, we started with the metal, so yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, <coughs> it was real, really nice talking with you. Thank you. <coughs> we have uh, more and more conversation that we yeah. need to continue. Yeah, but we my, just started with the my, music. My, my, my.